Welcome back to Chemicals Knowledge Hub TV. My name is David McClelland. You are in the right place for industry insight and analysis. Joining me today to talk about transforming end-to-end -end drug, drug development partnerships is Sarah Bethune, who is Senior Director for Pharmaceutics and Formulations at Cambrix Corporation, and John Lynch, who is Director for Process Chemistry there too. Sarah, John, thank you very much. Sarah, I'll come to you first of all. Uh, just, just tell us a little bit about Cambrex and, and how it's evolved over the years. Sure, absolutely. Thank you, David. Cambrex consists of 12 sites across North America and Europe. Um, we have a 40-year company history um, across those 12 sites. We are now experts in preclinical development, all the phases of clinical development, as well as commercialization, both for drug substance and drug product. Um, and so it's this entire breadth of CMC that we feel um, makes us a leading CDMO in the industry. Mm, and you mentioned various sites uh, across across the country there, Sarah. Um, which markets do you tend to serve? Sure, we certainly serve most of the m the common global markets. Okay, okay. Uh, John, I'll, I'll come to you next. Uh, tell me, wh why why does drug development benefit from end to end partnerships with CDMOs? Hello, uh, and thank you. Uh, I think the pace of drug development has significantly, significantly increased over the last 10 years. Uh, innovative companies have a very uh, tight timelines to meet their patients' needs. End-to-end -end development, uh, in my opinion, not only speeds the development, but it reduces the complexity of the companies that are looking to develop their drug substance and drug products. Mm. So, so talk me through, John, a, a typical end-to-end -end project. How, how, how would that be handled and what, what sort of, you know, in, in terms of the benefits, time saving, for example, how can that be realized by, you know, having the product development and production all on the same site? That's a good question. Um, most projects, I would say, that we see uh, involve process R&D component. Uh, along with analytical support, analytical method development, mm -hmm. followed by a non-GMP toxicology batch and then a GMP batch for clinical materials for drug substance. Uh, also, there would be drug product formulation followed by non-GMP and GMP uh, production of the drug product. Um, I think the dominant savings in time is resulting from overlapping of drug product development activities with drug substance development activities. Uh, for example, what typically happens here is uh, when we land a project, the process chemistry starts by uh, reproducing the customer's um, process verbatim, if possible. This does several things for us. Uh, it allows us to evaluate the process and the materials and get used to how things handle through there and identify products or pro problems, I should say. Uh, it also gives us comparator experiments for future changes in the process. And most importantly, it gives us material that we can give to our drug uh, formulation group, Sarah's group in this case. It allows them to start their work earlier. And I, I really think that's the dominant saver in time. Sure. And in terms of, John, where, where you think Cambrex can deliver the greatest value about speeding up that process, you know, where is, where is the outsourcing benefit or competitive advantage that way versus overseas CDMOs, where we've certainly seen a move in, uh, in recent years? Yeah, in terms of saving uh, time and speed, um, it really is something I already touched on in terms of doing drug product development in parallel with drug substance development. Mm -hmm. However, versus overseas companies, I think we save uh, customers time and headaches by uh, we don't have to deal with shipping complications that can delay material mm -hmm. arrivals and that sort of thing. I think also the big advantage we have here in terms of um, 
interacting with us versus overseas is communication. So we're typically on the same time zone or very close to it. Uh, we provide very well-written uh, technical updates for the customer and on a bi-weekly or weekly basis. We also have very good verbal communication at teleconferences uh, with the customer. And then finally, our scientists are available directly to the customer as well as technical management. Mm. We really can stay yeah, like a partnership with the client, I should say. Yeah. And I, I guess some of those uh, some of those distance challenges, supply chain challenges, supply chain challenges um, uh, have really come to the floor, come to the fore over the last twelve months, where we've seen the pandemic, you know, disrupt certain supply chains and certain you know traditional uh, f flows of of product. Um, Sarah, I I'll come to you because uh, you know Cambrex, of course, well known for development and, and manufacture of APIs, but perhaps less so for drug product formulation. Tell me a little bit more about that, about about the facilities, about how long you've been operational in that area. Sure, thank you. Um, 2021 is actually Cambrix's 40th anniversary, year anniversary. Um, 40 years ago, Cam you are correct, Cambrix started as, as a drug substance supplier. Um, and over the past few years, they have acquired drug product sites that specialize both in early stage as well as late stage drug product uh, development and commercialization. Um, while those acquisitions have occurred only over the last few years, um, the drug product sites have a long history and a strong history themselves. So drug product is not new necessarily um, for our clients. And so we can certainly rise to the same um, level of expertise that we have um, such a rich, rich history for drug substance as we can now for drug product. Um, Cambrick specializes in all things liquid and solid for oral um, dosage formulations, um, as well as a few specialty topical um, formulations, drug product options. We, because we have early stage as well as late stage, we can assist clients as early as perhaps looking at an animal study where you need to compare a free base versus a salt to decide if there's an in vivo benefit. Um, we can do a fit for purpose phase one drug product and such as a drug and capsule or a simple blended capsule. After that, we certainly have the wide array of typical, uh, like as I mentioned, solid and liquid, more sophisticated, robust um, drug product options. As a formulator, um, I'll speak just briefly as to what I think the benefit for our clients can be um, by having this end-to-end -end drug, um, drug development service offering that Cambrex offers. Um, I lead a formulation team at one of the drug product sites. Um, formulators are, there's a stereotype that we tend to want to use, ask for a lot of drug substance. Um, I would say that stereotype's usually correct, um, so not only having drug substance colleagues like John down the hall or in a sister site make it very convenient to ask for a few more grams or a couple hundred more grams of API, they can always, having a competent process chemistry team um, at your side is a great benefit to formulators. We will formulate faster and more efficient by having more material, just as John said. But we also, um, because we work side by side, and we're integrated between drug substance and drug product, the formulators have a lot of drug substance knowledge themselves and how the drug substance process changes and those changes therefore um, can affect the downstream drug product activities. And I think that's extremely beneficial and, and time savings for our client. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, John, we're, we're almost out of time, but I'll, I'll come to you for our final question. Um, tell me, what, what do you see as your business prospects over the next few years? You know, we've talked about um, about how uh, some some CDMOs um, working abroad, th th there's been kind of a, almost a move back towards insourcing in a way, you know, some, some competition, winning back business from some of these Indian and Chinese competitors. So, so just tell me how you see the land lies for you and, and that bit of the market over the next few years. Now, 2020 was an excellent year for Cambrix. Uh, we certainly are looking to build on that in the future. And I would say that 2020 is an excellent year despite challenges from the pandemic. Um, in terms of our competitive uh, advantages to, as opposed to Asian suppliers, 
there's several, and I've touched on some, but I think people have come to realize that speed, quality of science, and um, communication outweigh the initial costs that sometimes drive customers to Asia. Uh, I would also say the pandemic has really driven home the message that uh, we're a little too reliant on Asian vendors, and that's led to some U.S. initiatives, even by our government, to promote onshoring of these activities. Um, it's hard to predict exactly what will happen, but I think this will continue in the near future, and that's certainly what we're, we're thinking is going to happen. Well, a bright future, I am sure. Uh, listen, Sarah and John from Cambrex Corporation, thank you very much indeed for joining us here on Chemicals Knowledge Hub TV. I wish you all the very best for the future. 